Classification of partially edentulous arches. In the previous presentation, we discussed Kennedy's classification for partially edentulous arches. In this video, we'll take a look at some other classifications in relation to partially edentulous arches. Kummer's classification. This is the first professionally recognized classification which was introduced by Kummer in 1920. This classification is based on the relationship of the edentulous spaces to the abutment teeth. So according to him, partial dentures can be classified into four types based on the position of the direct retainers. Diagonal, wherein two direct retainers are diagonally opposite to one another. Diametric, two direct retainers are diametrically opposite to one another. Unilateral, two or more direct retainers present on the same side and multilateral wherein three or rarely four direct retainers in a triangular or rarely quadrangular relationship are present. The advantage of this classification is that it allows the analysis of support to the teeth whereas the demerit being that it does not represent the edentulous space as to how many number of teeth are present in the edentulous space. The next one is Balin's classification, which was proposed by Dr. Charlin M. Balin in 1928. It is the first classification which gives importance to support of partial dentures by the remaining tissues. Descriptive letters are used to represent the anterior and posterior restorations. So anterior restorations correspond to A, where there are saddle areas anterior to the first bicuspid, that is the premolar. P represents posterior restorations where there are saddle areas posterior to the canine. Further, they are subclassified as class one, which is a bounded saddle having no more than three teeth missing. Class 2, free end saddle, where there is no distal abutment tooth. So here you can see it is a bilaterally edentulous area where there is no teeth present in the posterior region. Class 3 is again a bounded saddle, but here more than three teeth are absent. So in class 1 and class 3, both are bounded saddle, but in class 1, less than three teeth are missing and in class 3, more than three teeth are missing. Accordingly, class 1 is tooth supported, whereas class 2 and class 3 are tooth tissue supported. The advantage of Balin's classification is that it emphasizes support by remaining tissues, so it can guide in designing the removable partial denture. Whereas the disadvantage being, as with the previous classification of comers, that it does not represent the number of teeth which are missing in the indentulous area. Now in cases where anterior and posterior teeth are missing, the classification, the class of anterior and posterior teeth are mentioned separately. So this image would be balance A3 as teeth are missing in the anterior region. So it corresponds to A and class 3 because it is a bounded saddle with more than 3 teeth missing. This image so there is an edentulous area in the anterior region with two teeth missing and an edentulous area in the posterior region with about three teeth missing. So this will be balance A1, P2. In this image, there is again a free end saddle. So the edentulous space in the right, there are about two teeth missing with supporting teeth present anterior and posterior to it so this will be p1 and on the left side there is a free end saddle so this will correspond to p2 so this classification would be balance p1 p2 moving on to skinner's classification this classification was introduced by dr c n skinner in 1957 so his classification had five classes of which a few were similar to Kummer's classification so this classification is based on the relationship of the abutment teeth to the denture base spanning the edentulous area. So class 1 
is wherein the abutment teeth are present anterior and posterior to the edentular space. It may be either unilateral or bilateral. So the black circles correspond to the teeth present on either side of the edentular space. Class 2 corresponds to partially edentulous arches wherein all the teeth are present posterior to the denture base which functions as a partial denture unit. It can again be unilateral or bilateral. Class 3, all abutment teeth are anterior to the denture base which functions as a partial denture unit. Again, it may be unilateral or bilateral. So class 2 and class 3 are kind of like opposite to each other. In class 2, there is an anterior edentulous space whereas in class 3, there, is, there are two posterior edentulous spaces. Class 4, denture bases are located anterior and posterior to the remaining teeth and these may be unilateral or bilateral. So this is a combination of both anterior and posterior edentulous area. And lastly, class 5, the abutment teeth are unilateral in relation to the denture base and these may be unilateral or bilateral. So all the teeth are present only on one side of the arch. The merits of Skinner's classification is that it defines the relationship of the abutment teeth to the edentulous space in an anterior posterior and sagittal plane which provides an idea about the support available. Whereas demerit is that the quadrant is not defined and similar to the previous classifications there is no representation of the exact number or the type of teeth missing in the edentulous spans. Now, this is a comparison of Kennedy, Balin, and Skinner's classification. Uh, these images are taken from McCracken's removal partial denture textbook. So in this image, the teeth are present in the anterior region with bilateral edentulous space. This corresponds to Kennedy class 1, Balin class 2, and Skinner's class 3. In this image, this is a unilateral edentulous space in the posterior region corresponding to Kennedy class 2, Palin class 2 and Skinner's class 3. In this image there are, there are four edentulous spaces. The two posterior edentulous space make it Kennedy class 2 and the other two edentulous spaces make it modification 2. So this is Kennedy class 2 modification 2, Palin's class 2 and Skinner's class 3. This image there are two edentulous spaces so this makes it Kennedy class 1 modification 1 Balin class 2 and Skinner's class 3 the incidence of this type according to Skinner is about 72 percent in this image there is single edentulous space bounded by teeth anterior and posterior to it so this is Kennedy class 3 Balin class 1 and Skinner's class 1 a similar image here this is Kennedy class 3 but then here it becomes Balin class 3 that is it is a bounded saddle with more than three teeth missing and Skinner's class 1. In this image this is Kennedy class 3 modification 1 with Balin class 1 and Skinner's class 1. This type corresponds to 14% of incidence according to Skinner. In this image teeth missing in the anterior region so this is Kennedy class 4. Balin's class 3 because there are more than 3 teeth missing in a bounded saddle and Skinner's class 2 that is all the teeth are present posterior to the denture base. This image is Kennedy class 3 with modification 1, Balin class 3 and Skinner class 2. The incidence of this these type of cases it was about 8.5% reported by Skinner. Here there are 3 dentular spaces so this is Kennedy class 1 modification 1, Balin class 2 as it is a free end saddle and Skinner's class 4. This image 3 dentular spaces Kennedy class 2 modification 2, Balin class 2 and Skinner's class 4. The incidence is about 3%. In this image this is a unilateral edentulous area. So this is Kennedy class 2, Balin class 2 and Skinner's class 5. This image is Kennedy class 2 modification 2, Balin class 2 and Skinner's class 5. That is the abutment teeth are unilateral in relation to the denture base. The incidence was reported to be about 2.5% by Skinner.
Now let's take a look at classification of the partially edentulous arches based on support. Support is the resistance to movement of the denture towards the edentulous ridge. So there are three types of RPDs or partially edentulous arches based on the tissues which provide support. RPDs may be tooth supported, tissue supported and tooth tissue supported. So this is a simple classification system and very meaningful because the principles of RPD design depends to a great extent on its supporting tissue. The tooth supported RPDs receive all the support from the abutment teeth. Most tooth supported RPDs have a cast metal major connector although sometimes it is possible to construct a tooth supported interim RPD with a plastic major connector and wrought wire rests or transocclusal clasps. Tooth supported RPDs do not move appreciably in function. The tissue supported RPDs, these are primarily supported by the tissues that is the mucosa overlying bone of the denture foundation area. Tissue supported RPDs usually have plastic major connectors and are therefore usually interim RPDs. Tissue supported RPDs will move in function because of the resiliency of the mucosa unlike the tooth supported RPDs. Retention for tissue supported RPDs is customarily provided by wrought wire retentive clasp arms on selected natural teeth. So the tissue supported RPDs is essentially a complete denture with some remaining natural teeth. Tissue supported RPDs have the potential to cause soft tissue damage and periodontal attachment loss and accordingly should be used for only a short period of time that is about a year or less. Now the third type that is the tooth tissue supported RPD. So this is supported at one end by natural teeth which essentially do not move and at the other end by the denture bearing tissues that is the mucosa overlying bone which moves because of the resiliency of the mucosa. So it is a combination of the tooth supported and tissue supported RPD. So this was about classification of edentulous arches based on support. In the previous classification, we covered Kennedy's, which is the most commonly and universally used classification system. And in this presentation, we talked about few others, which are important from the examination point of view. I hope you have liked this video. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.